tolerance means that someone who is exposed to uh, an antigen fails to respond to that antigen in the future. And we have over the last 10 years learned a great deal about the mechanisms of tolerance. And the really exciting field now is trying to use this knowledge to either induce tolerance in patients or break tolerance in patients. Uh, so the community of immunologists is trying to induce tolerance uh, to transplants so that people don't reject their transplants. And the advantage of inducing tolerance compared to other current therapies is that the therapies that are available today shut down all immune responses. But if you can induce tolerance, you will only shut down the response to the transplant and all other immune responses will stay normal. Similarly, people are trying to induce tolerance uh, in allergies and in autoimmune diseases. And these are all attempts that are going on both in the laboratory and in clinical trials. It's proving to be pretty difficult. It's going to take quite a lot of effort before we are able to successfully induce tolerance in these diseases. What has been quite successful recently is the opposite, which is to break tolerance in patients with cancer. So inducing tolerance is a way of shutting down the immune responses. Breaking tolerance is a way of increasing immune responses. And this has been very successful in cancer. We have learned some of the molecules that induce tolerance and if we can block those molecules we can also block tolerance and the patients make much better responses to the cancers. Uh, some of the drugs that do this have already been approved others are likely to be soon approved and this has led to a completely new uh, new paradigm for immunotherapy of cancer. So I think tolerance as a basic science problem uh, has been very well studied and the next five or ten years will uh, lead to application of the basic science to patients with different diseases, both inducing and breaking tolerance.